one a x is less than or equal to seven. Done. One b w is greater than negative two, but less than three. So yeah, so w is greater than negative two, but less than three. All right, that's what that would look like. One c Z is positive. To be positive means that you are greater than zero. So it would just be like that. That Z is positive for one C. C two A. So we have negative three squared plus negative three in parentheses squared minus parentheses negative three. Oh boy. So look, in this first one here, only the three is getting squared. So that's nine and the negative remains. In this middle case, the square applies to both the three and the negative. So that's negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. Here in the last case, you drop the negative. You would think that this double negative is positive, but no, because PEMDAS, exponents first. That is positive nine. This negative remains. So now look at this trio of nines. These nines knock out. We're left with negative nine as the final answer for 2a. 2b, three squared times three to the negative six times three to the negative two to the power of negative five. So maybe first we can go power to power. Power to power, you multiply. So that's three to the power of 10. And then we have a bunch of threes that are being multiplied together but you go about it through addition of the exponents. So you add all these exponents together. You keep three as three. You just add the powers together and that should give you back three to the power of six. So for that problem, the general idea is a to the power of p times a to the power of q is the same as a to the power of p plus q. However, a to the p to the power of q is the same as a to the power of p times q. So those properties were used for number two. For number three, we have to find, for 3a, so we want to find pm plus nm minus 7p squared. Now make the substitutions. m and, n and p are given. So in the first one, it'd be minus 1 for p times negative two for m plus n is four, m is negative two minus seven times the square of p, p is a minus one. So that's the setup right there. Well, let's see, that's just two. That middle cluster is a negative eight. And here in the back, yet again, these double negatives do not meet because the exponent happens first. First, you square the negative one to make it positive one. And then you go positive one times the seven. So it's two minus 15. If you collect those two negatives, it's negative 15. And then two minus 15, negative 13 for your final answer for 3a. For 3b, we have the expression 6p minus 5n plus 4n. Throw in the values for m and p, p being a minus one n being four, and m being a minus two. So this is a negative six, a minus 20, and a minus eight. They're all negatives. So add them all together and keep it negative. It looks like it'd be a negative 34 for the result for three b. Four a, we have x cubed times a fraction. In the numerator, we have 2y to the minus 3z, all that fun stuff to the negative 4, and then x to the minus 5. So what I would do first is I would ensure that everyone in the parentheses has an exponent. The 2 and the z just received the power of 1. And now distribute that power of negative 4 to all the powers inside the parentheses. So we'd have x to the power of 3. So next step, x to the power of three times. So on the top, it'd be two to the minus four, y to the power of positive 12, z to the minus four, 
over x to the negative 5. If you want, just put a 1 underneath x cubed. Now, in class, we said this is a good time to make movements. Anything with a negative power, move it to the other location. If it's in the bottom, go to the top. If it's in the top, go to the bottom. Move stuff around. Let me go up here. So if you move stuff around and, and leave things where they are if they're positive, for instance, x cubed, leave it in the top. y12, leave it in the top. x to the minus 5 is going to go upstairs because you want the power to be positive. 2 to the minus 4 goes to the bottom, and then the 4 would be positive. z to the minus 4 goes to the bottom, and then its power would be positive. Mm -hmm. And then just clean this up. Like upstairs, you have x3 and x5. Collect them to get x8. y12 stays. In the bottom, you have 2 to the power 4, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then we have z4. And that should be the final answer in the answer key. That was, that was number 4A. Yeah, so that was 4A. And here is 4B. We have parentheses. We have m to the minus 4. N and then Q to the minus 7. All that. Uh, well, that's the top. And in the bottom, we have 2, Q minus 2. N, 3. M, 8. And everything to the minus 3. So first, make sure that everyone has a power to begin with. So I'll give a 1 to the 2 and a 1 to the n. Then distribute the 3 to all the powers, top and bottom. Everybody gets the negative 3. Do that, and we'll get this here. Let's see. So let me draw the fraction bar. It would be m positive 12, n minus 3, q positive 21. In the bottom, 2 to the minus 3. Q positive 6, N negative 9, and M minus 24. And then move things. Move things so that everybody is positive. Let me go here, I guess. So that would be M12. And then N moves to the bottom. Q stays above. 2 goes to the top. Q stays in the bottom. N9 goes upstairs. And M24 goes upstairs. And then collect things. Let's see. So in the top, you combine the M's in the top. We would have M36. And then we would have, you can put an 8. That's the 2 to the third. That's the 8. And then we have Q21, N9. And below, we have N3. And then Q6. And all that's left to do now is simplify top versus bottom. For instance, look at the N's. We have N9 and N3, those just subtract them. The nine on top is bigger, so just subtract three from the nine, and that'll give you six Ns in, in the top. So let's see, so we should have this watch. It should be M36, keep the eight in the front, and then it should be Q15 and then N6. I don't think anything is left in the bottom because the top sort of gobbles up the stuff from the bottom in this case, because the Q21 is bigger than the Q6. You subtract, you know, 21 minus six, that's Q15. And nine and three, that's N6 up above. So let me just box that in. That should be the answer for 4B. 4B, now five, let's go to five. The domain, we want domains. So for 5a, negative seven over x plus eight. Remember, the only thing you don't want, the only thing you want to avoid is dividing by zero. So in here, the only thing for x that I cannot use would be a negative eight. So x, you can be anything in the world except for negative eight. So my domain would look like this. My domain would be equal to the set of all x's such that x is not a negative 8. Close the set. That's how you, that's one way to answer this question. You could answer this question many different ways uh, on the exam, honestly, but here's one valid way. X can be anything in the world except negative 8. Notice I don't even look at the numerator. I'm only concerned with the denominator. 
because I don't want to divide by zero. The only time I would look in the top is if the top had like some square root or something like that, but I don't think we've seen that. 5b, x plus one over three x minus seven. So here I'm looking at the bottom. I don't want the bottom to equal zero. So what I'll do is I will set the bottom equal to zero and then I will find the very thing that X does not have permission to be. Solve this equation. Kick the seven across to the other side and then divide by three. And voila, you have found the very thing that X cannot be. So here X cannot be seven thirds. So my domain could be something like, I'll just put D equals the set of all X's such that X is not seven thirds. That's your domain. Five C, five C, we have the square root of five over X plus two. And just a moment ago, I was saying that you should be concerned with the top if there's a square root, but only if, the, if there's a square root with like a variable. If it's just a constant like five, there's really no need to even look at the top. So we're still just looking at the bottom. And here, we just don't want X to be a negative two or we don't want it to be negative two or a positive six. Either one of those causes trouble. So both of them are kicked out of the party. So your domain, your domain... Your domain would be as follows. It's the set of all X's such that X is not negative two. X is not six. It can be anybody else except either of those two values. Number six, part A, simplify and write in standard form. All right, let's do this. So we have two parentheses, three X squared minus four X minus one. Take away five times six minus four X plus X squared. Let's go ahead and distribute these coefficients to everybody. So six X squared minus eight X minus two minus 30 plus 20 X minus five X squared. And then just combine like terms, right? Whatever like terms we have combined, for instance, the squares go with the squares. So six and negative five, that's just one X squared. And then these X's combine together. So positive 20 and a minus eight, that's a positive 12 looks like. And then the constants, those are your constants there. Combine those, that's like a minus 32. So we've simplified and in standard form means that you have the largest exponent and then counting down from left to right. So X power two, X and then just a constant. 6B, we have, looks like it's multiplication. For 6B, we have 4X minus one times 7X plus five. Yeah, go ahead and hit the distributive property. So we'd get 28X squared plus 20X minus seven X minus five. Combine the fingies in the middle and those terms give us 13x in the center. Everybody else stays the same. Mm -hmm. 6b, 6c. Ooh, we have a cube. We're going to cube 4x plus 2. 4x plus 2 cube. So that's going to be 4x plus 2 times 4x plus 2 times 4x plus 2. Well, we can do everything in one step. Let's just look at, maybe we can just look at the first pair. So maybe just go like that with the first pair of factors. So that'd be like 16 X squared plus eight X plus eight X plus four. That's the first pair. Keep the second pair there. And before we just combine the eight X's together in the center. So we have 16 X squared plus 16 X plus four. And then we can distribute, let me switch, switch colors. How about we go like this, watch. Maybe you can distribute the four backwards in red, and then in green, we'll distribute the two to everybody. So we can color code this. 
So my red terms, if I go 4x to the left, to the far most left, if I distribute the 4x, it should say, let me go right here. It should say 64x to the power of 3 plus 64x to the power of 2 plus 16x. And then in green, if you distribute the 2 to everybody, it should be 32x squared plus 32x plus 8. And I lined them up so that the addition is like terms. See the way I sort of wrote it here? And then just combine these to get your final answer. So 64x cubed stays as is. In the middle, we have, what is that, 96x squared. And with these axes, that'd be 48x plus 8. Box that in. Done. Number seven, find the quotient and remainder. Ooh, long division. Oh, yeah, long division. So let's look at number seven. Uh, yeah, just number seven. So we're going to divide. Let's go long division like that. We have 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 1. And this will be divided by x plus 2. Recall how we play this game in class. You want x to match with 6x cubed. To make that look like this, you times it by 6x squared, which is to be written above the squared term like that. Then we distribute the 6x squared to everybody outside, to the divisor. That would give you 6x cubed plus 12x squared. And then remember in class, this is when we said that you want to like protect this, subtract it, and draw your little refresher bar, how that these would knock out. And then this is minus 4, minus 12. That's a minus 16x squared. The next thing falls down from the sky. And then we play this game over again. Now we want x to match with negative 16x squared. So we need a negative 16x right there. And then distribute the negative 16x to the divisor. I'm going to give you this here. Protect this, and we're going to subtract. And that's 7 minus negative. Minus negative is positive. So this is really 7 plus 32, which is 39x. And then the 1 falls down. The minus 1 collapses. And then one more time, x becomes 39x if you times it by a positive 39. Distribute the 39. That would be 39x plus 39 times 2 is 78. And if you subtract those things, negative 1 minus 78 is negative 79. So we're done. Our quotient, our Q, I'll just call it Q for quotient, would be 6x squared minus 16x plus 39. And then our remainder, you could say, would be just a negative 79. There's different ways you could have answered the remainder, but I'm okay if you just tell me the leftover, and you just call that the remainder. Let's keep going. Number eight, almost there. Well, sort of, because nine and 10 are like monsters. I see, so number eight. Number eight, we're going to long divide. We have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 being divided by x plus 1. All right, let's go. So for x to become x cubed, we need x squared. Distribute gives you x cubed plus x squared. Protect and subtract. There is an invisible one here in red right there. And when you subtract them, 3 minus 1, you get 2 x squared. While the next piece falls down to the sky. And to make x match with 2 x squared, we need a positive 2 x Distribute 2x to get 2x squared plus 2x. Subtract these to get 1x plus 1 when this thing is down. And it looks like this is going to go in perfectly because now we just need a 1. And when you distribute the 1, it's x plus 1. And when you subtract these things, there is no remainder at all. Right? There's no remainder. So that happens sometimes. So here my quotient would be x squared plus 2x plus 1. 
and my remainder would be zero because it was a perfect factor, right? The divisor goes perfectly into the dividend whenever the remainder is zero. All right, 9A, factorization for all of number nine. 9A, we're going to factorize 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. Let us turn three pieces into four pieces. So go like that. And then we multiply the top numbers. That's a negative 30. And the middle number just goes into the bottom. That's a negative 7. Find two numbers that multiply here, but those numbers add there. Should be a negative 10 and a positive 3. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because if you multiply these, you get the top. If you add them, you get the bottom. So we keep the first and last term. It's just the middle term that gets separated into two terms using the numbers there. And then we group factors. Yeah, group factorization. So from the first pair, you can remove, you can factor out a 2x, leaving you with that inside. From the latter pair, Three and negative five, the only thing that comes out is one. So nothing changes on the inside. And that's appropriate because the parentheses match. So you know you're on the right track. So just combine the pieces that were sort of taken out, attach the common factor, and there is your factorization. And on the midterm, as I said in class, on the midterm, you can check your answer. If you just distribute, you should get back to the original thing in a jig. Okay. Uh, 9A, so here's 9B. 9B, it looks like this is a sum of cubes. So recall your sum of cubes, x cubed plus y cubed. Recall from class, the notes are x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. That's the pattern we're going to follow for 9B. So 9B it actually says 125x cubed plus 27. So let me set up my answer here in green. You set up a binomial and a larger trinomial. So this is a sum of cubes. You keep the same sign as the original, and then you switch the second sign, and the last sign is always positive. And then to fill in these first parts there, you cube root this, you cube root that, the cube root of this would be 5x. The cube root of that would be 3. Once you have this filled in, you can build the bigger guy based on the little guy. The thing that goes here is the square of this. So if I take 5x and square it, then in here, the square of this, if you square it, it's 25x squared. That's how you know what goes in the middle piece there. So that should say 25x squared. In the back here, you just take this guy and raise it to the power of two, giving you nine. In the center, you just multiply those two objects together. So five X times three is 15 X. Done, box that in. That is your factorization for nine B. Nine C. 9C looks like a difference of squares. Look at your notes in the classification. For a difference of squares, it's going to be binomials, one positive, one negative. You square root 81, you get a couple of nines. Square root 16y squared, get some four y's, done. For 9C. For 9D, Another instance where if you want to, you can go like that. If you want to, there is an invisible one there in the front. One times minus 24 is minus 24. We know the 10 just goes into the bottom. Find two numbers that multiply to the top and add to the bottom. The two numbers should be positive 12 and a negative two. So break up the middle piece using these two numbers. So we should have one X squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 24. Go group factorization. In the first pair, you can take out an x. In the latter pair, you can take out a negative 2. If this sign is negative, you want to take out negative, and then possibly some other number. And look, the parentheses match. 
So combine the things that got kicked out to get x minus 2, and then x plus 12. Done. Quick comment here. You know how we put 12 and negative 2? If you had put the negative 2 and then the 12 on this side, you would totally have gotten the same answer. Just a quick comment there. 9e, the last one for that problem. It says x to the power of 64 minus 64. That's a difference of squares. That's like saying a squared minus b squared becomes a plus b times a minus b. It's the same thing. So watch. Let's set up two parentheses like this here. One positive, one negative. Let's just put the number in the back. The square root of 64, you know that's just going to be 8 in the back. But what goes here? What goes there? You have to square root this. The square root of x to the power of 64 is going to be x to the power of 32, not 8. Because when you square root an exponent, you chop it in half. You divide by 2. So filling in these question marks here should be, as we just said, x to the power of 32. x to the power of 32. Box that in. So the last question, number 10, it's all about solving equations. Okay, so this is 10a. So I would distribute the negative 2 first. That'll be a negative 8 plus 14x. And then maybe I can add 8 to this side. And this will be 13. Everybody else can stay the same. And then how about I bring the x to this side? So I'll subtract 3x there. This will be gone. Subtract 3x there. That'll be 11x. And then to get x alone, we use division by 11. So x is by itself. And then we're done. x equals this strange fraction. But hey, that's the right answer. 13 11 for 10a. For 10b, we have a fraction there on one side. We have 6x minus 1 over 5 equals 2x plus 3. Well, that 5 there, we really don't need it to be there. It's kind of bothering. How about we multiply immediately by 5 so these cancel? But you'll have to multiply the other side by 5 as well to keep this thing balanced and distribute the 5 while you're at it. So on the left, it's just 6x minus 1. And on this side, when you distribute, this is what you get back. And how about we subtract the 6x and we subtract the 15? So if you subtract 15 to there, that'll be a minus 16. And if you subtract 6x from 10x, you get 4x. And then divide by 4 to get x alone, and x would equal a negative 4 for 10b. 10c, let's see what's going on. Uh, negative 1 over x plus 1. I just put the negative up top instead of in the front. I just decided to kick it to the top. You totally can do that. Now, how about, like, how about we take this entire cluster and add it here? If the one is negative, this would just be a positive one on this side. So with that movement, we'll get this. We get 3 over x minus 4 equals 1 over x plus 1. And what if we cross multiply? I don't know if we've done that in this class yet, but we can totally cross multiply, a technique from the past. So we can go 1 times this. We can go 3 times that. And you set those things equal to each other. So there are no longer any fractions. Distribute the one, distribute the three. And then solve. I'll go ahead and subtract the x there and subtract the three there. That would be a minus seven equals two x. And then divide by two, divide by two. So x would equal a negative seven over two for the final answer, 10c. Ten D, we have a quadratic. We have a couple of quadratics for ten D. Let's see here. So we have x plus three squared. Is my camera still working? Let's see. Yeah, it's still on. <laughs> x plus three squared equals x squared minus four x plus five. So how about on the left hand side? How about we go x plus three times x plus three? Keep the right the same. And over here, expand this. Distribute, expand, combine like terms. You'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9 on the left-hand side. 
Now take a look at both sides, compare what goes away, what cancels from both sides of this equation. You see how this x squared would knock out with that, those are gone. And what if you add four x there and subtract nine from there? You add the four to the six, that'll become 10. You subtract nine from positive five, that gives you back a negative four. And then you do, if you divide 10, those will be gone on this side, right? These are gone. And that's a 10 there. And just reduce this fraction to lowest terms. And that should be your final answer for 10D. Ten E, let's see. So ten E, we have uh, W squared plus two W minus twenty four equals zero. You can go quad. Let me just do quadratic formula. We haven't done it in a while. That's A and that's B and that's C. So quadratic formula X equals negative B plus or minus the square root B squared minus four times A times C all over two A. So this would equal negative two plus or minus the square root of, in the parentheses, or in the radical, I should say, square the two. And then here, negative times positive times negative is positive. Four times one times 24 is 96. And in the bottom is just two. So there, that's gonna be four plus 96, which is 100. When you square root 100, it's just 10. So we'll get back, let me go up here. We have negative two plus or minus 10, over two. So separate this into two terms. Let me go here in red. So one of the cases is negative two plus 10 over two, and the other case is negative two minus 10 over two. Get your two answers. In the first option, that's eight over two, which is four. And in the bottom option, that's negative 12 over two, which is negative six. So these would be your two answers. Now you should note that you want to check these answers. So you could take four and plug it into the original equation to make sure it's true, to make sure it works. Then take negative six, plug it into both Ws, make sure it works. I can tell you just by looking at this that they both work. But on the midterm, you want to take the time to check to make sure these answers are legit. Right, 10E, so after E comes after 10F. 10F is a quadratic. A lot of quadratics, right? A lot of quadratics. 10y squared plus 31y. I'm going to call it plus 15. If you just subtract it, if you move the 15 to the other side by addition, you get this back. So how about we go like this x thing, right? So we can go 10 times uh, 50c. I'm going to try to factorize. I'm going to try to factorize and then solve. So I'm going to turn three pieces into four pieces by using this X thingy. So let's go 10 times 15, that's 150. And then the bottom, 31. So two numbers that multiply to 150, but they add to 31. Uh, what, what would that be? Uh, well, let's look. 10 times 15 is 150. 5 times 30 is 150. But I'm looking for numbers that add to 31. How about like 12? Does 12 go into 150? Hmm. What about, let's see, divide by two, divide by three times by three, 15, 10. How about divide that by three? No, how about, this is a one. Let's see, let me just make a list. One, two, three, four, five, five times three, we did that six. Six times what? I don't think six would work. How about six and 25? <laughs> How much is 25 times six? So that's going to be, yeah, it's 150, right? Because if you have if you have six quarters in your hand, you have a dollar fifty. Yeah, so six times 25. That was fun. Six and 25. So six here, 25 there, because they multiply to 150 and they add to 31. So we have 10y squared plus 6y plus 25y plus 15 equals zero. Group factorization. In the first pair, you can take out 2y, leaving you with 5y plus three. In the latter pair, you can take out a five, leaving you with 5y plus three. The parentheses match, let's go. 
So now we get 2y plus 5 times 5y plus 3 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. And these will be your two answers. Negative 5 halves and negative 3 fifths. And I can tell you they would both work. You check them by plugging them in, they would both work out. For number 10, part F. Almost there, folks. 10G. I think the worst is behind us. The rest, the last few don't look as bad. 10G, we have 7 equals the square root. 3A, I'll just capitalize the A, plus 19. Well, right away in this problem, I would square both sides. Totally square both sides is what I would do. So it's 49 equals. On this side, when you square the square root, it knocks out the symbol. So it just liberates whatever was inside. Subtract 19, divide by 3, you'll discover that A is 10. And you want to check it, plug 10 into the original equation, and you will see that it works. After G comes H. So we have the square root of negative 16 minus 2x equals the square root of negative 7 minus x. Well, what if just immediately we raise both sides of the equation to the power of 2? That will give us negative 16 minus 2x equals negative 7 minus x. What if I add 2x? There's an invisible one right there. These would be gone. So if I add these there, that'll be a positive 1x. What if I add 7 and 7? These would be gone. This would be a negative 9 equals x. So the proposed solution, the proposed solution is negative 9. Does negative 9 work? That's our only hope. It either works or there is no solution. Let's test it. Negative 9 is the candidate. Let's take negative 9 to the original equation which was this guy. So plug negative nine in there, plug negative nine in there. So if I plug in negative nines, it would say this. It would say that carefully with the parentheses and the negatives. These double negatives become positive. So it would be the square root of negative 16 plus 18. And similarly, those double negatives become positive. So it would say negative seven plus nine. Here on the left, that's the square root of two. That's the square root. Of, it becomes the square root of 2 equals the square root of 2. That is a true statement. So indeed, negative 9 worked out. It gets a thumbs up, two thumbs up. It passes. So that would be your answer for 10H. 10I, the last one. We made it. 3 equals the square root of 5X plus 99 minus x. Recall the tip from class. You want to get the radical expression alone. So move the x to the other side. Add the x away to the other side. It would say x plus 3 equals the square root of 5x plus 99. And then I would get rid of the square by raising it to the power of 2. Of course, both sides to the power of 2. And here on the left, if you expand it carefully, you get back this expression here. On the other side, you get back just the stuff inside the radical symbol. This is a quadratic equation. You want there to be a zero on one side, which means move this there, move that, move everybody to one side to create a zero on one side. So if I subtract 5x from 6x, that becomes a 1x. If I subtract 99 from 9, that's a negative 90. And then I would try to hit this either with quadratic formula, or if you want to factorize, we can try to factorize this. If we try to factorize this, you go 1 times negative 90, that's negative 90. The positive 1 stays in the bottom. The two numbers would be positive 10 and negative 9, because they multiply to negative 90, but they add to 1. So here, we can break those three pieces up into four pieces like this. Still equals zero. I'll factorize these by group factorization, right? This would be a group factorization. So it'd be x minus nine 
times x plus 10. All of this still equals zero, equals zero, equals zero. And then let each factor equal zero and solve for x. So the two possibilities are nine and negative 10. Those are the options, nine, negative 10. Let's test both of them. Let's see who worked. And then we're done with this video tutorial. So nine, negative 10. Let me erase all this. Nine and negative 10. Those are the options. So we're going to test nine and we're going to test negative 10. First, let's test the nine. Write down the original equation, but plug nine in for x. Let's see if this works. So three equals the square root. Five times nine is 45. 45 plus 99 is 144. And the square root, the square root of 144 is 12 minus. And that's true because 12 minus nine is three and three equals three. So nine, it's in the bag. Negative 10. Let's test negative 10. Let's see if it works. So nine, check. Let's test negative 10. Let me write the original equation again, but all the x's become negative 10s. So yeah, the negative is there. It's just the x that became negative 10. Let's see if this works. Three equals the square root of, inside the radical it would be that. This double negative becomes positive. Mm -hmm. 99 minus 50 is 49. The square root of 49 is a seven. Seven plus 10 is 17. Does three equal 17? I do not think so. So unfortunately, the negative 10 was a dud. The only valid answer would have been a nine. 